Hey everybody, it's Brandon Lake, and I'm here with my dad, Mac Lake, and we thought it'd be really special to bring you a podcast talking about family, life, leadership, creativity, and much more. Welcome to Generational Leadership. So I got picked on a good bit growing up, being a pastor's kid, being a PK, (laughs) so thank you. Um, I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, You know, it was hard being held to a higher standard, you know? (laughs) By by the community, not by us. Y'all did not pick on me, no, yeah. Kids at school, you know? Uh, I even had a teacher tell me one time, she said, oh, those PKs are the worst. I remember that. I think I did some, I don't know what I did. It wasn't a huge deal. I didn't yeah. ever, I wasn't super disrespectful or anything, yeah. but I did something and she was like, she made that comment, man, PKs are the worst. And I still remember that to this day. Yeah. It shaped, like it really, it, like it cut me, you yeah. know? But I remember thinking, you know, being young, I was like, oh my, sh- I'm gonna prove it to her. I'm yeah. gonna be so good. I'm gonna be, a, <laughs> you know? And uh, so maybe it actually works. Maybe it maybe is, you know, shape up. But I remember when kids would make fun of me, I remember thinking, y'all have no idea what I get to do on Friday nights. Mm. Friday night, family, fun nights yeah. with us planting the church yeah. and essentially, you know, you owning the church building. <laughs> so you all would always say, or Bree would always say yeah. that my dad owns the church. Uh, my daddy owns the church, so <laughs> you can't talk to me like that, you know? So we would, on Friday nights, Friday or Saturday, I'm sure it was Friday nights, we'd yeah. go to the, the church, you'd turn the lights on, you'd put a movie on the big screen, mm-hmm. the baptismal was a hot tub. Oh, yeah. So we'd get in and out of the hot tub, skateboard, the, the auditorium was a basketball yeah. court, yeah. so we'd skateboard, play basketball, jump in and out of the, watch a movie in the hot tub. Mm-hmm. We had so much fun doing ministry yeah. And you guys, like you did it, you really did it so well. I, I've never hated the church, feeling like yeah. the church stole you or mom away from us. I feel like we did it as a family, and that's one thing I'm trying to do now. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you where it came from, but I'll also tell you, I'm glad you have that perspective. because I would be curious to hear your perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll share that with you too, but... When in 1996 is when God called me to plant the church. And I remember, I never thought I'd plant a church, never thought I'd be a senior pastor. Mm. And I remember walking into the kitchen and looking at mom and going, we're gonna go plant a church in Myrtle Beach because mm. God just arrested my heart. Yeah, And she just started crying. And she was like, I knew it, I knew it. Wow. So we announced it to the church, we, we resigned. and. Huge step of faith for us. I mean, we were making little money, yeah, and uh, and big step of faith, not knowing if this is going to work, you know. And it was probably three to four weeks after I announced my resignation to go plant the church. I was listening to a podcast uh, or whatever it was back then. Yeah, um, cassette li- tape. A cassette tape. Yeah, I listen to a cassette tape, and this pastor said, "Hey, if you have young kids, do not go plant a church." No way. And I was like, whoa, Uh rewind, listen again. Did I hear that wrong, you know? And mom was right beside me in the car and we both heard it. And we're, I mean, it really disturbed me, but I was like, too late. Too late. Plus God told me to do it, you know? I'm not gonna gonna disobey. But uh, in that that, uh, car ride, we said, you know what? Let's make this fun. Let's go plant a church, but let's make it fun. And let's make it beneficial for our family and let's let it be something that blesses our kids. Wow. So let's do this different. And, and here's the commitment we made to each other. I wow. said, I said uh, if it's ever not fun, let's quit. No way. Yeah, if wow. it's ever not fun, let's quit. Now let me explain what I mean by that. If it's ever not characterized yeah, yeah. by fun, if it's making our, our life and our family worse, yeah. we have the freedom to walk away. Hmm. And, but we were determined, hey, we're gonna have fun. And so, you know, we kicked off, the, the whole church started with the children's program. We started Nick at Night. Yeah. And you guys were right in the midst of all that and it was fun. And Tell me a little bit about Nick at Night. Um, 
Do you so have you a story were, how it started, right? Yeah, you were six years old, and uh, you had a bunch of friends over at the house. We were living in Polly's Island at the time. And uh, at like five o'clock, you and these three, four kids came in, turned on the TV, and you watched this show called Wild and Crazy Kids. Yeah. And on Nickelodeon. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. were getting gack on their head and pies in their face and playing <laughs> these crazy games. And I was watching you guys, and I went, why can't kids' church be like that? So I was like, oh. Why well, can't all church be what? like that? <laughs> Seriously, that's another conversation. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I created a program that summer called Nick at Night. And Nicodemus came and, and met Jesus at mm. night. So I was like, hey, Wednesday nights, we're going to do Nick at Night for kids. Wow. And we're going to make, we're going to model it after these shows. Wild and Crazy Kids, all these. So it was skits and crazy, um, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the three stooges. <laughs> Imagine that, you know, and it was so funny. And and I remember chocolate, but we had you know, uh -huh. chocolate and it was being sprayed all over the place. And this lady would come up afterwards, oh, I gotta clean this, you clean the church. She was so stressed out. But uh, we just laid out, out in the field all these games with messy gack and water yep. and Fire trucks would come and just shower the entire time. I mean, it was a blast. Yeah. And um, and we had before we started Nick at Night, we had thirty kids at our um, children's program. In four years, it grew to nearly a thousand kids showing up on Wednesday nights. Unreal. It was crazy. Wow. So. It's beautiful too because it, it didn't just create an opportunity for us to have fun. Obviously, it really brought the community together. It oh. was beautiful to see. I remember having such pride. Like yeah. my dad's the one that does Nick at Night. Yeah. Like he, he, he came up with that, you know? <laughs> so we just wanted it to be fun. I remember when we were in Polly's, I wrote a family mission statement. I wish I'd have kept it. Hmm. Um, and, but it stated what our vision, our mission was as a family. But the first line was, we will be a family that has fun. Hmm. And so I knew, you know, from, I've always said this for church and family, what do kids value? Kids' number one value is fun. Yeah. That's why I have fun. Yeah. So if, and same thing with my grandkids now. It's, you know, so many times our value is faith, so we lead with faith versus leading with fun. Hmm. And if I want them to embrace my values, I have to embrace their values. Wow. So that's why I always want to have fun with your kids. Yeah. And if and if faith gets weaved in there, yeah. that's great. But yeah. I have to I have to prove to them over a period of time wow. that I value what they value. And if they value fun, I'm gonna have fun. That's gonna be my when I'm with them, that is my value. Wow. Because later on they know that I value their value, they will value my values. Wow. So my goodness. Anyway, so that that's why that's why we did stuff like Fear Factor. You know, we yeah, would yeah. Do, Friday nights we yeah. do Fear Factor and yeah. eat, eat crazy stuff or American Idol. Yeah, yeah. And we would I would make these crazy films and all that. Uh, There's a lot of Brandon Lake uh, family oh. uh, home videos that are extremely embarrassing. I could ruin you. Yeah. You could ruin me. <laughs> you have so much blackmail. Like I'm I'm actually seeing it right now. And it's terrifying me. <laughs> Uh, all the things only Britney's allowed to see those. Uh, she has, and and she she laughs quite hard when she yeah. sees them. We I remember the American Idol one oh. that we did. Oh, but I love that. You know, I'm really, I I genuinely mean that when I think back on my childhood, I would characterize it as fun, summarize it as fun, even though it was very hard. I remember yeah. times. Um, like, it wasn't always, like, there, it didn't mean that it was easy. Right. Oh, yeah. um, we had very little. Yeah, very little. You know, we, we got the Nintendo 64 game console six years after it right. came out. You know, it was like, it was like, I mean, I remember you guys being given free cars left oh, yeah. and right, cause we just literally couldn't buy a car, and someone in the church would donate a car, and it was never nice. It was always a piece. Yeah. But, um, you know, we uh, vacations were like very creative. Yeah. Um, family fun nights were very creative. Yeah. It was like we're, all we have is go to the church, or it's like movie night. We used to go to the grocery store. Yeah. And and there's a principle in here. I mean, there is a yeah. like you can do a lot with little. Like yeah. especially if you have kids, like with your kids, like y'all would say, hey, everyone's got five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah. Five dollars. 
go to the we go to the grocery store and you have to come up with five dollars. Mm-hmm. Now nowadays with inflation, it'd probably be like giving your kids twenty bucks each. Yeah, but yeah. it was like go around and find. You have to make a dessert, or yeah. it would change. You have to make something. Yeah. We'd go back home. We'd make it. <laughs> Kitchen it, was a mess. Such a mess. <laughs> absolute chaos and then we we would judge and we would vote on each other's desserts yes. and it was like i mean like i still remember that to this day yeah. multiple of those and, and it, we had best tasting best looking and best something else so everybody all three won. of you could win everybody won <laughs> mom and i would always lose yeah <laughs> appreciate that I'm, I'm glad you remember the fun times the good times yeah because from from my perspective that's encouraging because there, there are times, you know, I still wrestle. I wasn't a good enough dad. Hmm. And, and that bothers me. I'm going to cry in every episode. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> you know, I, you don't get a dad do-over. Well, I guess maybe do with, with grandkids to a degree. But you don't get a dad do-over. And I remember reading years ago in uh, Wild at Heart. Yeah. He said, men, you will, you will, I forgot how he worded it, but you will scar your son. You will scar your sons. You will scar your kids. There was something, you will wound them in some way. And I was so addicted to performance at that point. Hmm. My sermons were never done. I would work 20, 30 hours on a sermon. And Saturdays was the last day. And so I might have played with y'all during the week, but Saturday, the weekend, when you were out of school, I'm like, daddy's got daddy's to get ready for a sermon. Daddy's yeah. got to get ready for a sermon. You don't remember this, I don't think, but you came to me one day and you said, I hate you being a pastor. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, and, and so you're always busy on the weekends. Wow. Because I would study on Saturdays. And I was preaching on Sunday, and then after preaching a couple services, you know, I was, and then yeah. we'd go to lunch with somebody, I was wiped, yeah. you know? <clears throat> and so, as I think back about the past, I look at my faults and my shortcomings as a father. And it, it's crazy because I, when you, when you and Jordan and Bree talk about some of those memories, I go, oh yeah, yeah, those are bright lights. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, we did do that. I forget. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. didn't, <laughs> we didn't have social media back then, so we weren't taking pictures yeah. and videos all the time. And so very little memory. And it's funny, isn't it, over time, how you remember the worst, not the best? You remember the worst. I remember the best. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even remember the things that y'all got me. I remember the things that we did. And it's because we didn't get you anything. I didn't have much. <laughs> you were a materialistic little kid. I'm still <laughs> trying to work that out. I'm trying to work. God's working on me there. You know, I always wanted the next thing. You, you did. Know? You always wanted the next thing, and you always. And now here's the thing: when you were, when you, when I was getting ready for my sermon on Sunday, yeah, you were at the Seas House. Yeah, and you were out on their <laughs> playing boat. with their toys. Oh, playing with their toys. Their <laughs> boat. Their jet skis. Their their four wheelers. You know. So if you can't get it for your kids, just make sure your kid finds another friend yeah. that has all the things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But when I do like. And I look when I when I think back, like I really do. I think about things we did together. Yeah. And uh, it's very interesting to me, though, that that's like I would never. I don't remember saying that to you. Um, I think it was just a, a, a season you were in. Yeah. And and probably a season that I was in. So it's probably important too to pay attention to your family, your your children, the seasons that they're in. Yeah. Um, I've already noticed with me touring. Uh, it was easier two years ago than this past year. Hmm. The kids being littler, um, I guess they would have been, you know, more like two and four. Yeah. And now they're, well, I guess, yeah, they're like five and seven. I guess they would have started, I would have started touring, yeah, around that age, three or five. And uh, they didn't notice daddy gone as much. Right. And now I'm starting to get those comments. Mm. Uh, hey, you know, come to me. Hey, Daddy's got to go. It's we we say it's this many sleeps away. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's three sleeps. Don't worry. It's just three sleeps. Yeah. And they'll call me when I'm gone. How many sleeps left? You know. Yeah. And um, 
they're starting to notice more now. I'm starting to get those comments of like, as soon as I say, hey, I got to go. Like, no, I don't want you to go. Why do you have to go? You know? Yeah. And it's funny in the process of um, trying to give them everything, you know, you could leave them with like nothing, like give them nothing, none of you, you know? And I'm trying to provide the world for them, you know? And I want to, and, um, but it kills me. It kills me to have to leave um, and to see it becoming harder and harder. And so now me and Brittany are having conversations of, okay, what should ministry look like now in this season? Yeah. That maybe that was this many dates away was okay then or yeah. nights away was okay then. What, what feels appropriate and um, what, do we, what do we feel a like grace for for our family right now in this season? Yeah. And it's kind of changing. Yeah. How, how do you, because I remember back then when we planted the church, we were like, okay, this, our family's planting it. It's not dad's planting a church. Our family's planting a church. Yeah. How, are you, how, how do you integrate your kids into your calling? Um, you have to find ways, I think, of getting their fingerprints on it. Yeah. Quite literally, I remember being at the building, the laying <laughs> of the foundation. Yeah. And uh, of course, the whole community was invited out. But I remember it was very personalized for me. I remember writing my scriptures down or my yeah. my my thoughts down on the you know. He gave us all markers, and we covered that 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 church mm. with scripture and yeah. prayers and things we were believing for. And you, there, somehow, y'all kept this sense of I own this thing, yeah. and not in a weird, pri- right. you know, not in, yeah. but like this is my thing. And there was never that I remember, and of course there's going to be, there was never anything that y'all did that I wasn't allowed to be a part of. Mm. And that's probably tricky for some um, occupations and stuff, but if you can find ways to involve your children, um, there are things, there are trips I'm gonna have to go on I can't bring my kids, but my kids got to tour with me this year. You know, it's five days out of 30, but they got to experience it. They got to see what that, they got to play with the other kids out on tour, you yeah. know? They they understand more fully now what I, what I do. And they were running around in the hallways, throwing the football in the, in, a, in our arena, you uh-huh. know? And so Orlando I hope in a small- magic locker room. That yeah. Was, yeah. And, and like, and b- paying attention to like what they, you know, what's exciting for them. Like it was always yeah. like the, which team plays in this arena, you know? Yeah. And then like reminding them too, like, dude, you plays like you got to, you got to like see maybe you know like a few players walk through or like that that's their cars uh-huh. like you got to see so and so's you know, and um, and I think maybe enough of those maybe Blaze will look back one day and say what I'm saying about that like I remember like this felt like I felt like I was on tour you know yeah. I want Blaze to be able to be like it felt like I was on tour you know and I remember all those people lifting their hands yeah. and I remember. Like daddy doing funny stuff from the stage, looking out at me. When I look out at my son, honestly, this is probably the most powerful thing. Um, woo! Mm. Not a moment on that tour was more powerful to me than when they came out to watch the show. And I made a point to look out at Blaze and Bo and yeah. look in their eyes and lead them in worship. Yeah. Not that they understood exactly what's going on. They know we're singing about Jesus. Yeah. But in that moment, I wanted them to know, I see you, mm-hmm. you're a part of this. Yeah. Like, in a way- And like, they noticed it. And they noticed it. He, he, every time they come into the worship center when I'm leading at local church or, or a tour and they're there or any kind of night, I make it a point to look them in the eye and, and acknowledge their presence in the room mm-hmm. and they light up. But also on that tour, I'll never forget, they were both so excited that night. Now, it was the Mav City tour. Y'all were dancing a lot. Yeah. And you said, I don't know if they ask you or if you just agreed to do it, but you were going to do the gr- gritty. The gritty. The gritty. Yeah. <laughs> you were going to do the gritty on tonight. stage during worship. All they do is gritty all day. <laughs> you know, it's a popular dance right now. And, uh, you know, some famous footballers, like, does it when he scores a touchdown. They're obsessed. And so I was like, hey, watch tonight. During this song, like, look at me, and I'm gonna do the gritty for you. And I did, and oh my gosh, they loved it. They thought mm-hmm. it was hilarious. Yeah. I looked like a fool, but sometimes you gotta be willing to look like a fool yeah. for the sake of your kids, you yeah. know? And That's sometimes right. it's just, it's worth it to um, 
to be a little weird and to to, to bless your kids like that. You yeah. know, I'm sure some people saw it and were like, what is he doing? But I'm like, man, I'm ministering to my kids in a, yeah. in a different way, but I, yeah, I am, you know? That's right. And I, th- I think for kids, you know, when I think back, there's that immediate blessing, like, hey, let's go up and, and, and play wiffle ball in the church and jump in the hot tub. Yeah. But then there's that legacy blessing that, yeah. that, that they may not see right away. Yeah. And I remember there were times you would come to me and you would say, how come we can't have what other people have? Mm-hmm. How come we can't have this and this and this? And I said, hey, I wish I could provide those things. I can't. But the thing that you're going to get is you're going to get the richness of a faith because you're going to get to see God work in ways that perhaps these other kids don't get to. Yeah. Because the way our, where, where God's positioned us as a family, you're going to see the hand of God work in miraculous ways yeah. that so many other kids won't get to see. Yeah. I try to tell you that, you know, at 10, yeah. 10 years old, it's hard for a 10-year-old to understand. Yeah. But... It, it, it was a legacy blessing that you can look back on and there are memories you have that are tied to that. Yeah, um, it's marked me and quite literally became my first tattoo. <sighs> Forgot about that. Um, huh. if, I, if I think about what has God been um, undeniably to me? Yeah. He's been a provider. Yeah. And I do remember those moments of not having a car uh, y'all having a car and, and then the, I remember <laughs> I remember not having the things but I always and will always remember God showing up with something that filled that gap yeah. um, whether it was a memory or it was a physical thing the free cars the crazy diaper story oh like that gosh. obviously wasn't old enough to remember but we had no yeah. money for like diapers and a mailman comes up and rings on the door hey I've got there's no address on this year's supply of diapers. And you're like, what? Well, it's those stories. You wore pink diapers for six months <laughs> and blue diapers for six months. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse diapers. <laughs> yeah. Um, we were in seminary at the time. We, had, we literally had no money. Yeah. When God did that. And yeah, my, I didn't have a faith of my own um, till I was probably, we, till we moved to Charleston from Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. And I remember you took mm-hmm. me out to IOP Pier. Yeah. He said, um, here's a beautiful thing. Hmm. You didn't just tell me we were moving. You asked for my blessing. Hmm. I'd really like to do that. You're like, I'd really like, I feel like God's calling us to Charleston. What do you think? Hmm. Or in, some, in other words. And I remember in that moment, that's what I think back to and remember that's when faith became my, I bec- yeah. my faith <clears throat> became my own. Yeah. And I had to learn to trust God for myself because I was losing all my friends, this whole yeah. community that I'd been raised up in. Mm-hmm. And you were I had, the rock and I was, star in the community. I was, yeah. I was a popular kid. You were popular. I came here, I can't say the same. <laughs> can't say the same. You know, popular church, not so much at school. Yeah. Dropped sports, you know, started to get into leading worship, but it was, it was lonely for a minute, you know? Yeah. But you said, what you're gonna lose in this season, I believe God's gonna give you back tenfold. Mm-hmm. And we're cleaning, clinging to that word and believing it and then seeing it happen. So with that, and then story, testimony after testimony of miracles, and y'all continuing to like watch God come through and seeing that happen, it, it gave me, you know, that's what led me to having my own faith and trusting God myself. And now I'm trying to do the same thing for my kids. Yeah. They might remember... Uh, just playing football in the hall with, always at, you yeah. know, with the Orlando Magic uh, at the stadium. But, um, you know, maybe they'll vaguely remember and I'll be able to tell it back to them, like the number of people that came out that night, how many people were saved, you know, um, yeah. the, the life-changing stuff and that they got to, in a small way, be a part of that. Oh, yeah. One thing that... Um, also, this tattoo reminds me of, so that's so what Elijah goes up to the desert and God sends ravens. Mm-hmm. And it's such a story of provision. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing out there and God sends ravens to drop food for him. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I mean, I watched God provide in such the most like creative and miraculous ways. It also reminds me of every, like what you prayed over me every night that mm-hmm. I would receive a double portion of your spirit and your anointing. 
mm-hmm. like Elijah to Elisha. You know, Elisha, uh, you know, asked for a double portion of, mm-hmm. of, which I've actually been to Israel and met with someone. And she even said, mm-hmm. um, a, a tour guide who's really studied that text, said, talk, talk to me about the scripture. I really, really love it. And she said, mm-hmm. it's funny you say double portion because <clears throat> that's more of like, a, that's how you'd put it. But if you really, really study it, um, she believes it says that Elisha said, if I could just have, and it's a word for a measurement, which means I think it's either a third or a fourth of. Wow, wow. So, so if I, he, he said, if I could just have a third, a fourth, a fraction of the anointing of the spirit of Elijah, then like, like wow. And you've prayed for that double portion blessing. I'm gonna believe it's a double up. It's a double up, you know, it's yeah. a, it's an actual double. Yeah. But I feel that if I could have a, 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 a fraction of what is on your life, man, like I want that. And now what's beautiful and generational and what I, I just have to believe is mm-hmm. multiplying with your faithfulness to God, these stories of, of miracles and, and amazing faith that I'm carrying, I carry those stories and then I carry my own yeah. and I'm raising up these wild Shh. boys. Mm mighty little men of God, yeah. and I get to pass that down. Yeah. And just like generational curses could, could progress and, and mm. attach and grow, I have to believe there's this generational legacy and yeah. blessing that is multiplying. Mm. And I'm believing that what my children will get and inherit and what's on their life is just a blessing and a mm. favor and a spirit and an anointing that has just been going from generation to generation. And mm. I've to thank you for that. Mm. But that was a, there's not a night that goes by I don't think about praying that specific prayer. Yeah. So I think it's really, it's important not just doing what, like, what you're doing with your kids, with your family, but yeah. what you're speaking over them. Absolutely. What you're praying. Either prayer works or it doesn't. Yeah. What you prophesy works or it doesn't. And I've seen too much yeah. to believe that it's not real. And, um, and so I really do think about that. Not only what am I doing with my kids, but what am I speaking over them that they're hearing, but even when they're falling asleep and I'm putting my hand, the hand, the right hand of blessing on them, yeah. what am I believing yeah. for them on their life? Yeah. If we go back to that Alapalm Pier for a moment where we talked about moving here to Charleston, me coming on staff at Seacoast, <clears throat> you don't know how scared I was walking you out on that pier. <laughs> I probably walked out on the pier just to kill some time because I, I knew I, I knew I had <laughs> I to tell you. To say. I, yeah, yeah. I knew I had to. I, I had to tell you that. But you know, we had that conversation about moving to Charleston and me coming on staff at Seacoast. And I remember telling you, Brandon, I believe God is bringing us to Charleston, not just for me, but for you. You were about maybe a year and a half into picking up guitar. Yeah. I don't even think you had started singing yet. No. <clears throat> and so um, I shared with you, I said, I really believe God's going to bring you, bring us here for you as much as me. Wow. Because I believe there's a worship anointing that he's going to put on you when you're here. And, and I share that for a couple of reasons. One, you got your, you got your day-to-day with your kids where you're, you're, you're impacting their faith. Yeah. But there are milestone moments you have to look for in wow. your kids' lives too. Yep. And it's those milestone moments where it might be challenging, it might be some you know, heightened sense of opportunity that we have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God to speak into that moment because yeah. it is gonna be a memory for your child yeah. that shapes, shapes their faith. And so I, I, I shared that with you there that I believe God was bringing us for, for that reason. Then we get here. You couldn't break into the worship team. <laughs> I was like, yeah, my son plays guitar. Yeah, my son plays guitar. They wouldn't invite you in. And it was driving me crazy. It was driving you crazy. Yeah. But eventually, I think it was Josh Ray, eventually yep. Yep. You know, invited you in. To, to Which he actually made it in an Elevation song. Uh, <laughs> Josh Ray was my guitar teacher and my first like guitar teacher. And he led worship also for like the youth ministry at times. And we put him in the song, Old Church Basement. My, old, my friend oh. bought a cheap guitar. My friend Josh bought a cheap guitar, barely knew how to play it. Oh, <laughs> that was him. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's great. 
The other thing I remember, <clears throat> we had been here two, three years, and you'd started singing, and you were leading worship for a high school group. Uh, and what was that room called? Uh, Groundswell, Groundswell Nitro. You were, yeah, you were, leading, you were leading worship for Grands, Groundswell yeah. um, in that one auditorium. And you would look at me and go, Dad, you cannot come watch me lead worship. No. Uh -uh. Why? You can come watch me play baseball, but you cannot come watch me lead worship. It's too personal. It's too private. Yeah. So I honored that to a degree. I honored that. I would not come in there and watch you lead worship, but I would sneak in. <laughs> I would go upstairs in the balcony and I would watch you lead rehearsal. Yeah. And in that rehearsal, <laughs> I'll go, oh, Lord Jesus, help, help him. him. Help him. His voice, he's trying to hear these high notes. Your voice was cracking. Oh, oh man. you're off key. It felt like I went through puberty for 10 years. Oh, it felt so long. It, it, it was bad, but I knew you loved it. Yeah. And, and I never prayed that God would give you a good voice. Never prayed that. But I remember being <laughs> in, that, uh, in that balcony so many times saying, God, would you give him a worship anointing? Wow. Would you give him a worship anointing? Because there's a difference between there's a difference between a song leader Ooh. and a worship leader. Say it. And I just wanted, I just felt my spirit, God give him a worship anointing. That's part of the reason we're here. Wow. And so uh, wow. man, I see you doing this with your kids. I see you mm. seizing moments. You're doing the daily things. You're doing the fun daily things. I see you doing that. Mm. Um, I, I see you connecting with them when you are out of town. I see you bringing special soccer jerseys back when you're and surprise him or a puppy. You yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably a bad decision. But. Yeah, things like that that are also those tangible things they need of a, as a blessing, but I also see you building the faith, le faith legacies. Mm. And so integrating uh, Bow and Blaze into your songs, your album recently, that, yeah. to me that was huge. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, don't, I honestly probably did it very subconsciously. It just. Um, what song is it? So there's a song called Thank You mm. and brought the boy, uh, well, I brought Blaze. He was old enough to come with me to Nashville for a trip. And I was finishing up the record. And, um, and while I'm bringing him, you know, I think the day before I left actually, I remembered Bo, my youngest son. Uh, well, now I have a younger son, mm -hmm. so my middle son. Uh, youngest at the time, he grabbed my phone one day, and I probably had this on my phone for like maybe a few months. He grabbed my phone and he sang a spontaneous song he made up. And it's like, ah, 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 daddy and Bo is cool. <laughs> and then he starts saying, and, and God made you, and he loves you, and he likes you, and he thinks of you. <laughs> I posted on my Instagram, I was like, uh, just so y'all know, and I'm kind of joking, but I was like, kind of like serious. I was like, this is gonna be on one of my records one day. <laughs> and sounds like a joke, y'all like listen to these words. This is actually mm. super profound and deep, even though it's super elementary and he's saying God likes you. Yeah. But I think people need to hear that as much as they need yeah. to hear some of these other grand things. That... Yeah. And so I remember ha having this song, I was like, I'm gonna do something with this. So I send it to my producer. I'm like, start thinking of how we can make this something by the time I get there. We recorded a few other songs. Blaze is having a blast with my producer's kids out in the yard playing oh. sports, all that. And then I'm like, Blaze, all right, I want you to I want you to read this scripture if we get to this song. So I have this track open up with Bo singing his song, <laughs> prophetic song. Yeah. And then I I had written that morning before I left a little chorus in the shower. Um. It's like you know if if healing is the children's bread as children, like we return again and we say thank you. And just a sweet little song of just saying thank you to the Lord. And, uh, and then I asked Blaze to read this scripture. And so they bookend this song. Yeah. And I think I just did it for me, but I'm grateful that I did it because you're right. And I think maybe that, actually I remember saying this, um, I remember saying <laughs> I, I'm, like I wanted it for me, but if this song one day could be a catalyst to my my kids' faith, yeah. maybe something that they mm -hmm. need to cling on to. Yeah, um, I'll be glad I did it um, for them. One to feel like their fingerprints are on what Daddy does, but to like what a resource later on down in life when they're questioning everything and they're going through their teenage years and all of that. Yeah. That maybe I could send this song and remind them what they said, what yeah. they sang, yeah. and that we did it together. 
Yeah. Um, and the, sto the story of it. Yeah. I mean, just, I think if I could go back, if I had a dad do-over, I would double the amount of story memories wow. that, I would, that I could build into your all's lives. Hmm. Wow. There's a, there's a passage in Psalm 78, and I love this passage, uh, Psalm 78, verse, uh, I think it's verse 5. He says, He decreed statutes for Jacob, and he established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. So he's established the law in Israel, and he, which he commanded our ancestors before us to teach their children. Yeah. So the next generation would know them, yeah. know the law, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn yep. would tell their children. That's that's five generations yeah. right there. Yeah. And man, I just look at as a dad, I pulled you aside two, three years ago. And I said, I'm about to tell you something I never dreamed I would tell one of my children. I've always told you I love you. I, for years I've told you I'm proud of you. But I'm getting ready to tell you something. Man, it means Dang. the world to me. I admire you. Hmm. I admire your faith. Your faith challenges my faith. You, <laughs> you stretch my faith. You do in such good ways. I admire the husband you are. I admire the dad you are. And I see you taking what feels to me a deficiency of faith stories that we built into your life <laughs> and doubling those faith stories in the lives of your children. But now as a granddad, yeah. one of my greatest drives is to partner with you. Yeah. To build, I wanna build those stories as you're building those stories so that these kids will have such powerful faith, faith and fun memories that it will just continue to pass from generation to generation and building, building a legacy of the, the lake line that will um, continue to lead and impact the kingdom for ge generations to come. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, once again, I'm crying and shook, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what you've instilled in me and what I get to pass on to my kids, but that we get to do it together. Yeah. Thank you for creating Pops TV. <laughs> Your YouTube channel is fantastic. All the adventures you do with my kids. Um, we live an amazing, amazing life. And although it might not always be easy, um, man, we're watching God move left and right. Yeah. And, um, and you know, you don't have to come up with crazy things. Uh, um, you know, I think it's as simple as um, inviting the presence of God into your home, mm -hmm. creating an atmosphere of fun and faith. Mm -hmm. um, it could be as simple as like just, my mom just keeping worship music on. I even yeah. think that did something. Yeah. It created an atmosphere yeah. where the truth of God and was just present at all times, you know? Yeah. And, mom uh, was so good about that. Yeah, she's awesome. Mom, about that. I mean, she created the, the 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 box of miracles. We would write yeah. miracles down and put them in that box of things we saw God do. Every mirror in the house, there was a scripture. <clears throat> oh, to this day, yeah. yeah, to this day, she writes it on a three by five yeah. card, pops it on a mirror, refrigerator. And while we were watching movies in the back of the van with that little TV that we somehow hooked up in the van and yeah. the floor of the van, there would be John Maxwell <laughs> cassette tapes playing up in the front. Yeah. And uh, you'd be listening, just consuming leadership. And mm -hmm. I've said, there's two voices of my childhood, other than a few musical artists, but it's your, your voice and John Maxwell's. Yeah. <laughs> it's like ingrained <laughs> in my head because of so many drives and just hearing leadership stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and even I know I, that got into me because there was even a, a time John Maxwell said something I wanted to disagree with mm -hmm. as a kid. And he said, leadership's lonely. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, it's not, mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. And then I very quickly learned that leadership <laughs> is, is lonely. And so 
what you speak over your kids, what you have going on in the house, it matters. Your family's your first ministry. I don't care what you do. You lead a massive church. Yeah. If you uh, are a, a dentist, what? Mm-hmm. Your family is your first ministry. Yeah. And um, everything else should flow out of that. I want Sunday to be an overflow of what's happening in my house. Yes. Monday through, through Sunday. And I want, this is why we jokingly call our house the House of Miracles. It's also title of my record, but it came, became a motto and a mission for my family. I want that to be our church, number one. And I want us to have more stories of the miraculous in our house mm-hmm. than we encounter anywhere else. Yeah. And um, I want my kids to see it left and right. Mm. And uh, that's how we create you know, this uh, generational leadership.